These are meteorites. Each one is a fragment of an asteroid that shattered when it impacted the Earth. This one struck in northern Arizona about 50,000 years ago, pretty much obliterating everything for 20 miles around and leaving a crater almost a mile across. In our solar system, space isn't totally empty. There's material left over from the formation of the Earth and the other planets. These chunks of rock and ice are natural hazards. Every once in a while, Earth collides with one of them. And this has been happening for Earth's entire history. The asteroid hazard isn't just a scientist's problem. Big destructive impacts are rare on human timescales, but the chances that we, those of us alive today, will be seriously affected by an impact somewhere on Earth are perhaps one in 5,000. Improbable, yes, but a lot more likely than, say, the chance of me being in a plane crash. Personally, I don't want either one to happen, but they could. The hows and whys of asteroid hazards are complicated and not always intuitive. In this series of videos, I've taken the big picture view to make the problem a little easier to visualize. You won't see everything there is to know about asteroids, not by a long shot. But I hope that taking the broad view, the view from space, will help us have a smart and well-informed conversation about asteroid hazards and what we might choose to do about them. So we'll start with the makeup of our solar system. Earth orbits around the sun. So do the other planets, and so do the asteroids. That's the first step in understanding how an asteroid can be a hazard. This is the Earth, and this is the Sun. You'd have to line up 109 copies of the Earth to stretch across the diameter of the Sun, and 108 copies of the Sun to reach the location of the Earth. On this scale, Earth is too small to see. So we'll mark its location with a big blue dot and use a yellow dot to mark the Sun. The stars are in the distant background. Earth is continually in motion, its path through space bent by the gravity of the Sun into a near circle. That path is the orbit, and Earth takes one year to go once around it. Imagine a gigantic blackboard in space, and the Earth tracing out its own orbit. If we fly along with the Earth, we can see that, like a circle, the orbit is flat, and the blackboard marks the orbital plane. Actually, the orbit is an ellipse, but it's so nearly circular that it's hard to see the difference. At its closest point, Earth is only 3% nearer to the Sun than at its farthest point. But if we add the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and Mars, it's easier to see that the orbits are not quite circles and that they are almost, but not quite, in the same plane. The orbits don't cross, so worlds don't collide. This is the Earth, and this is an asteroid. This is the largest asteroid, Ceres. Like the planets, Ceres orbits the Sun, but here, between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Most asteroids orbit the Sun in this region, making up the main asteroid belt. But main belt asteroids, including Ceres, never come close to the Earth, and so never present a hazard. This is the orbit of Sisyphus, which crosses the Earth's orbit. Sisyphus is actually the largest Earth-crossing asteroid, but that doesn't make it a hazard. Its orbit is inclined to the Earth's orbital plane, so the two paths never actually meet. It's only when the orbits intersect that an asteroid becomes a potential hazard. This is the orbit of Midas, a potentially hazardous asteroid. If Midas ever hits the Earth, the impact will happen here, where the orbits intersect, and only if Earth and Midas arrive at the intersection at the same time. We don't know what Midas looks like, but this is Geographos, about the same size. And this is downtown Washington, D.C. An object this large impacting anywhere on Earth 
would be globally catastrophic. Fortunately, Midas is only a potential hazard, not a current hazard, because even at their closest approach, the orbits are still several hundred thousand miles apart. On this scale, Earth is only this big. Remember, it takes more than a hundred Earths to cross the Sun, and more than a hundred suns to span the radius of Earth's orbit. That makes Earth less than one ten thousandth the size of the near-Earth region. So to predict whether an asteroid is on a path that will take it here, here, or here, we have to know its orbit with a precision better than one one-hundredth of one percent.